what happened in the past 45, 50 years that radically changed our relationship to Earth and uh, in a very frightening way, <laughs> I would say. Uh, the Anthropocene is a word that was coined by uh, Kutzen uh, in around 2002-2003 and uh, the whole idea was to encapture the fact that uh, civilizations have um, changed their relationship with the, the Earth system uh, in, a, in a radical way uh, because we were now affecting the dynamic of this system and uh, creating through effects of scales uh, an exponential uh, growth of our activities in the last 50 years linked to the, use, the massive use of fossil fuels. We were affecting, in fact, the systemic, uh, um, uh, systemic functioning of this system. So the Earth is being changed uh, at the planetary level by human activities. The dominant uh, industrialized economies have in the last 50, 50 years um, created impacts on the, the Earth the biosphere that are modifying the way it has been functioning for the last 11,000 years. When one talks about the Anthropocene, one should not, one should not think that uh, humans are, are in control. In fact, by changing like phenomena like climate change or uh, the great, I would say, massive extinction of life on Earth, that is the biodiversity crisis everywhere. In fact, we are triggering processes that we do not uh, master at all. Decisions that we make today, they have consequences for the next 10,000 years. How can we find such long-term strategies for sustainability? It is clear that that is the big issue of uh, the Anthropocene if you try and understand it from a political point of view. Mm -hmm. Because um, usually uh, politics uh, are within a framework of, I would say, um, um, one would call it short term. So how can you plan for, for, for beyond that? It's already complicated to understand if we want to plan for 10 or 20 years or 30 years. But what could it mean? Uh, to suddenly take into account, into our political time, geological dimensions of our impacts on the Earth. Therefore, planning for 10,000 years. Uh, it, we don't, I don't exactly know what it means, but, but it is clear that uh, our political systems, our political decision-making systems, are not equipped to do that. And, and in order to be able to take difficult decisions with people, and this is what the art of a politician is supposed to be, uh, then you have to make them understand why you do it. And I think that is why we need today uh, to, to, to work very much on sustainability issues with humanities. Mm -hmm. Because it is only through humanities and the work that philosophers, uh, anthropologists, historians, of course, and, uh, and artists, and even designers, because we have to design the data in order to understand what it means, uh, th it is through their work and uh, the quality of their interpretations, their expertise, that we might be able to, tr to find ways to answer this dilemma. How to, to decide today for the next 10,000 years? You said something very interesting, that with our framework, nothing sustainable can be found. So, uh, how... Um, how to change this framework, dominant approach to things? The, the logic of global markets, uh, the logic of uh, free trade that uh, we have put into place to, uh, to justify this, this kind of uh, globalism of a market, uh, the primacy of economy on politics that uh, we have in our societies today, um, the consumpt consumption society, all these elements in fact are, are in fact unsustainable. And, and we might think that we, might, we, could, we could find a way out through the magic of technoscience. We could maybe say that, yeah, just think that if we would find another substitute for fuel, for fossil fuels, if we could find uh, technologies that would help us uh, take CO2 and, uh, uh, and greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere, if we would have free, clean energy for fusion, and so on. If, if, if. But that is not happening for the moment major technological change might not make, make, be, happen quickly enough to make a big difference between the scenarios. So, yes, the model within which we are, if you are uh, thinking seriously about it, if you understand the, I would say, physical, chemical, 
basis, energetic basis of this model, of this kind of mo political model, is not sustainable. So there's, there's no way that within this framework we can find the right strategy. That is what I meant. Well, so let's finish this short interview in a more positive note, because uh, listening to you, we feel like it's a end of the world scenario, but you told me that's not the case. So is there hope? Of course there's hope. Uh, it's not because that within the framework of thinking of our dominant model uh, and ways of that, that is in framing us for the moment, we cannot see uh, how to get out of it, or we cannot, we, everything seems impossible. It, it, it doesn't mean that because from where we stand, we can't see uh, any opening or any bright future or different future than, in fact, the, 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 the terrible consequences of, uh, of, and feedbacks of, of, of the way, what we are living today. Uh, it doesn't mean that they are not. You see, if we, can, we should be here, this is where we need to think out of the box. And, and uh, humanities, art, people like artists or philosophers, help us to think uh, outside of our common framework of thinking, outside of the zombie categories through which we understand the world. And uh, they open possibilities to, to, to link to what looks improbable today, but that might be in fact uh, the most uh, evident path if we take a point of view from tomorrow. We, we should not be uh, at all depressed by the situation. On the contrary, there's a possibility of emancipation, there's a possibility of renewal, and so on. That's, that's, that's what's happening today.